Hello, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we'll be working with Photoshop brushes again. This is a follow-up video for the jewel brush we worked on last week, so we'll be working on chains that you can use to incorporate with the jewel brushes to get some even more interesting new brushes. And I'm going to show you two styles of chains. So the settings for the brushes are very straightforward and will for the most part be the same for most chain brushes but the style of the brush is what has so much potential and possibility so i'm going to show you two styles and then i'm going to show you how you can style them even further to create something a little bit different but before we get started i did want to show you some examples from a kit that i have on or that i will have on my website so i'm going to click over here just to show you these examples really quickly because I want to show you you know different styles that you can get from this when you're working with chain brushes your two basic settings are going to be spacing and your angles these are all just basic shapes with this one we added I'm going to show you how to do this uh, here in a in a little while but I just wanted to give you just some examples and ideas for this this right here is just the same thing right here just a bunch of small circles and then I, I paired it with two bigger circles so you kind of get the idea here you know we did the same thing over here again over here but we're getting even more intricate as we go because I'm just layering uh, different styles of chains different sizes you know doing all of that stuff to give it a different look even though I am still working with basic shapes so that's, uh, and here's another example. These are not quite done yet, uh, but I did want to give you an example because this kind of goes off of the gemstone thing that we worked on last week. And I wanted to show you these in particular, you know, where we have right here, we have a big gemstone and then we have these little chains in between. But let me zoom in and hopefully it's not too, doesn't get too fuzzy. But um, you can see how, you know, we've added very small design elements in between here. So anyhow, this is just an example. You can get even more elaborate and more intricate with these um, basic shapes. Uh, but, you know, that's just to kind of give you an idea. Of course, you can use jewelry and other things to give you some inspiration. But let's go ahead and get started with this. So here on the side, if you've noticed, I do have another document open. All this is is a foil texture that we created in another video, and I will give you a link to that down in the description and up here in the corner, just so that you have it if you're interested in learning how to make this. But any foil texture, gold texture, you know, anything like that, silver, rose gold, whatever you have, is going to work for this we're just i'm just going to show you how to make a brush where you can preload all of your metallics into it and then just start painting without having to add styles or do any of that stuff so we're going to start here with a 1000 by 1000 pixel document and we're working with a white background the background is very important because Anything that's white is not going to register on this brush. Anything that is black is going to register 100% opaque. So it's going to be solid color. And then any gradation between white and black is going to be transparent. But the transparency is going to depend on where it's falling on that grayscale. So if it's closer to white, it will be more transparent. If it's closer to black, it will be more opaque but still will be transparent. The only one that is solid is going to be black and the white will be fully transparent. So just keep that in mind when you're creating your brushes. That is going to help you a lot. And I'm going to show you how to create a brush like that here in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a basic chain. So we're going to use the ellipse tool. And right now I have it on fill. I don't want to fill this one. So I'm just going to Take out the fill and I'm going to come here to stroke and make sure that that is black. So we have a black stroke for this and I'm going to take this down to six pixels. So if you want a daintier chain, you would do a thinner a loop or a link. And if you want a chunkier, more like men's jewelry style, then of course you would go thicker on the chain. So I'm doing something in between because I want it to be visible on the screen. This is going to be the basic shape for the chain. It's very simple. And I'm just going to come here to edit, define brush preset. I'm not going to name it, but you could name it anything you want. 
And now we have that brush here. I'm going to add a new layer just for testing. And I'm going to come here to my brush settings. Now, if you don't have your brush settings here on your side panel, you will find it here. So you can come here to brush settings and just go ahead and click on that and that will come up for you. The settings that we're going to work with here are going to be spacing. So we are going to take the spacing up. Now we want to make sure that these are linking. So you don't want to have it way out here. It just wouldn't make any sense. You could have it, you know, somewhere right here if you wanted. But for this one, we want it to be linking. So I'm going to leave it uh, right about 80, 85%, 86, I guess, is where it landed for me. So 86% on this one. And then, and this, of course, is your preference, you know, however you want that. That's pretty much all you need because this is a circle brush. So if I come in here, it's going to follow itself because it is a circle. You don't really need to uh, change the shape dynamics at all, but I'm going to do it anyway because I just always do this. So angle jitter, your control is going to be direction. That way your chain follows itself. I know it's doing that anyway because it's a circle, but uh, for other brushes where you have odd shapes and where you have links and things like that, this is very important. So I'm going to show you a square brush in a while and I'll give you an example of that. And I'm going to come here to the little hamburger menu and I choose new brush preset. And all I'm going to do is capture brush size and that's it. So this is a basic chain and I'll click OK. Now if I wanted to make this even more interesting, maybe I could duplicate this one. So I just was holding the option key and I duplicated that. Press the letter V on the keyboard and I'm going to bring this over, but I'm going to make it smaller. Press the letter U to bring up my shape settings right here and I'm going to add some opaque color there. Now what I'm going to do is I could leave it like this and this would be a flat chain, uh, but if you wanted to add some dimension to this, you could come in here, double click on the far right hand side, bring up your layer styles and if you remember when I told you about the gradation, so we're going to use that to add some dimension to this little thing right here. You could add it to this as well. So we're going to come here to bevel and emboss. We're adding an inner bevel technique smooth. We'll leave our depth at, let's take this up a little bit more. I'll leave it uh, right, right around 550 is fine. And then I'm going to take my size to 16 so I'm just getting this spiky cone style right there this contour is called triple ring but you can use any of of these we'll go ahead and leave it at this one I believe this is called peaks so we'll leave it at peaks uh, but you know any of those you can experiment with all of that stuff and then my highlight I'm leaving it white 100% my shadow black 100% and I'm gonna click OK just uh, click on the option key and drag all of those same settings to the ring itself, to the chain, and um, it'll apply it to that as well. So I'm gonna come here to edit, define brush preset, and this is gonna be our, um, I don't know, I'll call it link. Now I'm gonna turn those off and turn my sampling layer back on. And I'm gonna come back in here to my brush settings, here to spacing. And I'm going to space this out more than 100% because this we're going to use as a link. So I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it at 120, 120% and see what that looks like. And then I'm going to come here to shape dynamics. Before I go into shape dynamics though and make any changes to that angle jitter, I just wanted to show you what this brush would look like before I do that. So you can see right there how it's just not following itself. It's not fluid. It doesn't flow like a chain would. You know, for situations like this is where we need to make sure that we have direction selected here under angle jitter. And that is going to give us that flow that we need in order to make it look like a chain. I'll go ahead and delete that layer and we'll start over again. I'm going to come over here and we're just going to use a rectangle. Just any rectangle. I have it at six. I'm going to make this a little thicker. Maybe we'll go eight for this one. And then we'll add another little link here. And I'm actually going to remove the stroke for that and then just fill it. This is going to be the chain that we're going to be creating. And again, just basic shapes. We have a rectangle here and uh, another smaller rectangle there, but we've made it solid. 
So I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to hold the shift key, grab that first rectangle and then the second one. So I have them both selected. Letter V on the keyboard to bring up these alignment tools and I'm going to align it vertically. So this is going to be the vertical, vertical center for that um, just to make sure that it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and leave this flat and I'm going to come here to edit, define brush preset and I'll just call this square chain. Go ahead and click OK. When I say flat, what I'm talking about is I didn't add any uh, gradation like that bevel and emboss that we did earlier. It's just a flat black opaque brush. Go ahead and add a testing layer there. And then I'm going to come here to the brush settings. I'm going to make sure to check off shape dynamics and choose direction. And then I'm going to come up here to brush tip shape and add some spacing. Now the spacing for this is going to be much higher because it's a longer brush and we also have that little link, that spacer here in between. So I'm going 195. We'll see what that looks like and we can adjust it later on if we need to. I'm seeing some gaps here so I'll bring that down to 190. Okay, let's see what that looks like. You could have added uh, you know, all of the bevel and emboss and everything and given this some dimension. But I, do, I did want to show you another way, which is why I have this here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this brush. I'm going to come here to File, Brush Preset. I'll just call this Square Chain 2. Click OK. Uh, but what I'm going to do is come over here to the brushes and I'm going to hold, click and hold that until the flyout menu comes out. And I'm going to choose this one. It's called uh, Mixer Brush. Come over here to the brushes and I'm going to choose the brush that I just created and then I'm going to come over here to this document make sure you're inside of that document hold the alt key and then just choose a portion of it and you can kind of get a little example of what you're picking up right here this is the reservoir uh, like a little paint reservoir and it's going to hold that pattern in it so that when you come back over here to this side make that brush smaller when you come back to this side you're getting that pattern already inside of that shape so you don't have to add layer styles or do anything like that let's make a bigger copy so you can see that let me add some black here so we can have some good contrast and then what we're going to do with this um, if you're happy with the way it looks and everything we can come back into this section right here the brush settings come here to the hamburger menu choose new brush preset and this time we are going to choose include tool settings and include color this is going to keep that gold texture inside of our brush so that next time we use it it's already going to be preloaded in there i'm going to go ahead and click ok so if i come back over here uh, you'll see where it has that little droplet above it and the color so my base color is black it, that doesn't really matter because you're not going to be able to see it anyway but whenever I come back to this color it's going to load black as my base and then that pattern is going to be over it so if I go back over here to brushes and I have this selected well you can't see it because I have that black but you know you're getting that just basic brush but if I come over here and I just click on this brush, it's automatically going to go to that mixer brush and it's going to go to this loaded gold because those are the settings that I saved for this particular brush. So then you can come on in and paint. So you'd have to make this style, uh, you know, if you're doing gold, silver, rose gold, all of that stuff, you'd actually have to save the brush three times in order to get the gold brush, the rose gold brush, the silver brush. You know, you do the work up front and then later on, you don't have to worry about it. You can just start painting with those patterned brushes and that's going to save you a lot of time if this is something that you're going to be using a lot. So if you like this video, please make sure to like, share, subscribe to this channel, or if you have any tips or something that you've learned along the way about creating chain brushes like this, I'd love those comments as well. And don't forget to visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.